Welcome to this video about using Splunk with Salesforce event streaming data. My name is Jason Conger, and in the next few minutes, we're going to look at the different types of Salesforce data. We'll explore user events like logins, permission changes, and login as activity. We'll get visibility into what connected apps are doing, and we'll even have some Slack interactivity. So let's get started. A typical Splunk solution starts with getting access to data. And there are three main data sources in Salesforce. Objects, the event log file, and streaming events. Objects are things that exist. For example, a user object will have a name, a user ID, an email address, etc. And we gather this data by issuing SQL queries. And you can use as many SQL queries as you like. And whatever data is returned by the query shows up in Splunk. And we'll often use this data to enrich other data sources. For example, several data sources have a user ID, but not a user name. And using Splunk, we can combine this data together to make it more usable. The event log file contains events that have happened in the Salesforce environment. Think logins or report views, for example. And we gather this data via a Salesforce REST API. However, that API may have a three to six hour delay before events even show up. And that might be okay for some data sources, but other data sources like login activity, you'll want them closer to real time. And that is where the streaming events come into play. We can subscribe to topics in Salesforce and have that data pushed to Splunk in near real time. For example, we can subscribe to login events and have that data in Splunk in seconds instead of hours. Refer to the Salesforce real-time event monitoring documentation for a complete list of topics. Any topic that is available from Salesforce can be consumed with Splunk. In fact, in this dashboard, we can see the real-time events streaming in. Okay, so now that we have access to the data, we want to ask questions of the data. And they could be developer questions like report performance or IT questions like third-party app installs. You can ask security questions like who logged in as whom and what did they do? And we can ask these questions across multiple Salesforce organizations at the same time in the same Splunk interface without context switching. Sometimes these answers to our questions lead to action. This could be as simple as sending an email or opening a ticket in a ticketing system or posting a message to a Slack channel. There are numerous Splunk integrations today and Splunk is a very extensible platform if you need to customize it for your own needs. Okay, so let's dive into some security use cases. We'll start with the security posture. Here we see the number of failed logins today, a trend line for failed logins over time, the reason logins are failing, and which users are impacted. We also get a quick view of permission changes that are happening in our environment. We can see who gave permissions to whom and what those permissions were. Finally, we are keeping an eye on connected application queries that are returning large amounts of records. This could be an indication of a misbehaving application or something more nefarious like an insider threat. We can dive a little bit deeper by examining connected applications that are querying which entities. Let's check which application is querying the opportunity entity. We can see the application name and the exact query used by the application. Next, let's take a look at login as activity. We get a quick overview of activity over time, as well as seeing who logged in as whom. Now here, we can see that Jay Conger logged in as M. Adams. Taking a step further, we can drill down to see what activities Jay Conger performed while logged in as M. Adams. It looks like Jay Conger ran a report and exported the results. Now this could be troubleshooting or someone trying to hide their tracks. Either way, we have visibility in Splunk. The last scenario that we will look at is Salesforce machine learning events. Salesforce is running machine learning algorithms on their side and pushing the data to Splunk. Now these are typically high priority events and we'll want to take action quickly. We are going to set up an alert that post a message in a Slack channel if these events come in. Then we'll be able to run an automated Splunk SOAR playbook 
directly from Slack. The playbook will force an immediate password change for the user. Now, it would be wise to correlate and investigate other data sources you have in Splunk for this compromised account. And this could be done easily with Splunk Enterprise Security or Splunk Security Essentials. To set up an alert, we start with a search. And once we have our search returning the data we want, it's as simple as saving it as an alert. So I'll give this an alert a name. I'll make it shared in real time. And then we add actions. Actions are what we do when an alert condition is met. In this case, I want to post a message to a Slack channel. Now you can have multiple actions for the same alert, and there are a multitude of alert actions that you can download from Splunk Base. To set up this alert, we'll set up the channel where we want to post this message. I'll set up a message. I'll attach a link back to the Splunk instance that generated the alert. And finally, I'll include some field names from our search to post in Slack. Click Save, and the next time one of these events come in, Splunk will react and post a message in Slack. So let's check that out. Here I have my Slack instance up, and I'm going to manually generate one of these machine learning events in a demo environment so we can see it posted in Splunk and then posted in the Slack channel. So we see the event pop up in Splunk behind the scenes here. And we see the alert fire in the Slack channel. We can see that the username John Smith had a successful credential stuffing attack. Now, we want to force a password change immediately for this user so we can kick off a Splunk SOAR playbook right now that can do all, all of that for us. I give it a playbook name and the user. Now that initiated a Splunk SOAR playbook that forced a password change immediately for the user in question and I did it all here from Slack. To recap, we have looked at the main Salesforce data sources. We explored several user and application events and we have taken action with Slack in Splunk Soar. Thanks for watching and happy Splunking.